Uh, good morning, boys and girls. My name is Mr. Tim, and today for our children's church program, we're going to talk about a story that I call Compelled by Love. So what does the word compel mean? It means to have a strong desire to do something. Have you ever had a strong desire to do something because you just wanted to? How about Mother's Day? Just a couple of weeks ago, I bet you some of you guys made a card for mom, or maybe you picked her some flowers, or maybe you made her breakfast in bed. And if you are really good, maybe you did all three. Why? Because you felt that compelling urge to do something for someone that you loved, mom. In the same way, Jesus came to earth because he was compelled by love. Whose love? His love and God's. And I remember verse, it's out of Psalm 111.9. And we're going to read it and then we'll talk about how we can see the compelling love of God right in this verse. Let's read it together. It says this, He provided redemption for His people. He ordained His covenant forever. Holy and awesome is His name. So where do we see compelling in there? He provided redemption for His people. You know, when God created the earth, He made it perfect. Adam and Eve came along and they sinned. They disobeyed God and that broke a perfect relationship. And so God said, I love my creation, but I don't love this sin that's caused a separation between us. And I'm going to do something about that. And so he provided redemption, a way to pay for that sin. Why? Because he loves us. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And it goes back to this statement right here. He provided redemption for his people and he ordained his covenant or a promise forever. When does forever end? Never, right? So God's love compelled him to send Jesus to pay for the sins of the world so that we could have our relationship with God once again and that relationship forever. So in talking about Jesus showing God's love and others showing God's love. I'm going to start today's story talking about a, a lady named Mary. So, when was a time that you wanted to do something uh, for someone that you care about? Once again, Mother's Day would be a good example for us. Uh, Father's Day too, don't forget, okay? But anyways, thinking of Mary and, and uh, this particular story, the, it takes place in the final week of Jesus' life. And so he's visiting a place called Bethany, and he's going to a dinner that's being held in his honor. And a lot of people are there, and a lot of pretty rich people are there, I'm sure. His disciples were there. Well, there's also a lady named Mary, and the Bible tells us that she brought a bottle of perfume, very expensive perfume. And because she just loved Jesus, we find out that she did something very beautiful, beautiful for him. In fact, that's what Jesus said. She broke this bottle of of perfume and she poured it on his body starting with his head and on his feet and she used her hair to wash his feet and while she was doing this some of the people that were looking on they started asking the question why would she spend so much money on that perfume and just pour it on this guy man we could do so much if she would have just taken that perfume and sold it and given us the money in particular there was one guy that was thinking that his name is Judas We'll talk about him a little bit more, but he was the one that took care of the money purse for the disciples who traveled with Jesus. You know what I learned when I was reading this story? He sometimes stole from that money purse. And because of that, you would think that Jesus would kick him out of the group, but he never did. I wonder why. Think about that. Well, in this story, Judas says, why can't you just sell that perfume and, and let's put it in our little money coffer so that maybe we can help other people? He was saying that, but he was thinking of ways that he could dip into that money coffer himself for himself. So anyways, Mary's idea, though, was, you know what? I love Jesus, and I want to show him that I love him, and this is a way that I can do that. And when the disciples started complaining, Jesus said, stop. She's doing something beautiful for me. She's preparing me for when I'm going to be buried. And he knew that was just a few days away. So, why did Mary do that? There's a verse in 2 Corinthians that talks about the love of Christ compelling us. That's what it was. It was the love of Jesus for Mary that she felt that made her want to do something 
in response. And it was that love of Jesus that compelled Mary to do something nice for Jesus. Well, shortly after this, a few days later, the, uh, the disciples got together with Jesus and they celebrated what we call the Passover feast. Every year, the Israelites would have a Passover celebration to remember when they were in Egypt, they were slaves, and how Moses was sent by God to deliver the people out of Egypt. And just before they left, one of the last plagues was that the death angel would come through. And the Israelites were told to put blood on their doorpost. And when the death angel came through, and if he saw the blood on the doorpost, he would pass over their home. And so every year since then, they had what they would call their Passover feast as part of a big celebration in remembering their independence from Egypt. And so this Passover feast, Jesus was going to celebrate with his disciples. And the Bible tells us it was the last time he was going to be able to sit down and have dinner with them. And so they get around the table and they're eating and they're talking and Jesus makes an announcement. He says, one of you guys is going to betray me. Now, just before this feast, Judas had actually gone to some of the high priests and he had negotiated a price that they would pay him if he would deliver Jesus to them. They had been looking for ways to arrest Jesus for a long time, and they thought, this is, this is the time to do it. And the Bible tells us that Judas had met with him, agreed on a price, and then he was joining Jesus and the disciples for their Passover. And while they're eating a little bit, Jesus said, one of you is going to betray me, and it's the one that dips his bread in the oil. Well, that was Judas. And Judas simply asked the question, is it me, Lord? And Jesus said, it's, it's you. You said, just like you said, it's you. Go and do what you need to do. And so the Bible tells us that Judas left the group and he was on his way to go get his money from the high priests. So Judas was compelled. What compelled him? It wasn't love, it was greed. So there are different things that compel us to do things for people. Sometimes it's love, and we do that because we just want to respond, wow, mom loves me. I want to do something nice for mom. Sometimes we do things because we're told to. Do your chores or else. Well, that's a different kind of com compelling uh, in, in, you know, motivation, right? So, but in this case, for Judas, it was greed. He wanted that money. And so he's off getting his money and he's putting together, he's getting the crowd together who is going to go out and soon they will meet Jesus uh, to arrest him. Well, after Judas is gone, Jesus has his last supper and he does what we, we call the Lord's Supper. He breaks the bread and he drinks the cup with his disciples who are left and then after they're done, he takes them to the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, the Bible tells us that they walked out to the Garden of Gethsemane and it was on the Mount of Olives and it was a place that Jesus always went to pray. He loved it up there. It was probably very quiet, very peaceful. And so all the disciples went with him. And then when they got to a certain spot, he took Peter, James, and John with him a little bit further, it says. The Bible says that he took them about a stone's throw. How far can you throw a stone? 50 feet, 100 feet maybe. So they went a little bit beyond where the other disciples were. And Jesus told Peter, James, and John to stay where they were at and to keep an eye out and to pray. And then he went in a few more feet and he, he started praying. And the Bible tells us that Jesus, being in human form, he was making a prayer to God the Father, saying, Lord, if there's any other way for this plan to be fil fulfilled, you know, can we do that? But if not, then I'm ready to do, to do your will, which he knew was to die on the cross. So why did he pray that prayer? He prayed that prayer because he was showing us that he was fully human. Jesus came to earth as a baby, but he was still God. But as a human being, he took on all the things that you and I as human beings take on. He was hungry. He was thirsty. And here, he's even thinking about, is there another way for this to happen? Well, the Bible tells us that as he prayed, he was sweating so hard, it was actually blood, uh, blood drops that were falling off his face as he's praying. Just praying and praying and praying, talking to God the Father. When he's done, he goes back to, to see his friends, Peter, James, and John, and guess what they're doing? They're sleeping. So he wakes them up and says, come on, guys, can't you stay awake just for a little bit? Keep an eye out for things. I'm going to go pray again. And he go, goes and he prays a second time the same prayer. Father, if there's another way, but if not, I'm ready to go. 
And the Bible tells us that again, he went back and he found them sleeping. And he did it a third time too. Well, the third time he got back to the, the disciples, he's waking them up. They're a little bit groggy. And then he sees off in the distance, lights. People are starting to show up in the garden. And he knows that it's just about time for things to take place that need to take place. And so the Bible tells us that this crowd comes and they have some soldiers with them. They have some townspeople with them, but they also have Judas. And Judas had told them, when we get to this place and I'm going to take you, I'll show you who you're going to arrest by giving the man a kiss on the cheek. That was a regular formal greeting back in the day. And so Jesus sees Judas. Judas comes up to him. And this is amazing. Jesus says, do what you have to do, friend. Isn't that neat? Judas, who's just betrayed him, who's basically been uh, looking for a way to get Jesus killed, Jesus calls him his friend. No matter what, no matter where we're at in life, Jesus loves us. When we're lost in our sin, he loves us. When we're following him, he loves us. No matter what, no matter where, Jesus loves you. While well, Judas gave him that kiss and Jesus was getting ready to be arrested. And the Bible tells us that suddenly one of his disciples, Peter, pulls out a sword and he goes after one of the guards. And he swings this sword and he cuts off the dude's ear. And so Jesus says, whoa, stop. We don't need to do that. And the Bible says that, says that Jesus picked up the ear or gave the ear to the man. And he put it back on and he healed his ear. Moments before being arrested, he calls Judas his friend. And one of his other enemies, he heals his ear. I wonder what that man thought as days go by. And as Jesus dies on the cross and then eventually they find out that he's come back to life. I wonder if that man ever went back to that moment and said, you know what? He really was the son of God. I don't know. But I think he probably did. And then the moment came that they had to arrest him. Now, the Bible tells us that Jesus told his guys, I can call a legion of angels anytime I want. I could have thousands of angels here in a moment's notice, but that's not the plan. The plan is for me to give up my life. But there's a neat verse that, that comes to mind. Next slide, please. That verse is out of John 10, where Jesus says, no one can take my life from me. I sacrifice it voluntarily. That is love. Why did Jesus do it? Because he was compelled by his love for you and for me. He voluntarily gave up his life so that he could be the perfect sacrifice that God needed to pay for the sins of the entire world. That separation from sin can now be closed because of the work that Jesus did on the cross to pay for our sins. And if you know Jesus as your Savior, maybe this verse or this couple of verses will, will have a, a deep impact on you as well. Read what it says with me. It says, for Christ's love compels us. Why? Because we are convinced that one died for all. That's Jesus. And therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Because Jesus loves us. We ought to love him back because he was compelled to die on the cross for us. We ought to be compelled to love others as a result. How can we love others? You love mom and dad by obeying them. You love your brothers and sisters by not fighting all the time, right? We love our neighbors by helping them out. There's all kinds of ways that we can show our love for other people. Let's try to do that this week. Show someone you'll love them because you feel compelled by love. All right, time for some discussion questions. So we talked about this word compel. What does it mean to be compelled? Talk about that and see what you think. See if it works for you. And then a question to think about was, why do you think Mary felt compelled to anoint Jesus with expensive perfume? What made her do that? And the last question, why do you think Jesus was compelled to die on the cross for you? A good verse to read is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. That's a clue. God loves us. 
He loves us so much he was compelled to send Jesus to die on the cross to pay for our sins. Jesus loves us so much that he was compelled to follow through on the plan that God had set in, in place to pay for our sins. And we can show our love to God by doing things for others that show that we love them just like he loves us. So let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day and thank you for your love for us. Thank you for the Bible that gives us so many different stories of how Jesus came to earth, how he did great things for people, but most of all, he died on the cross to pay for our sins. And we thank you for that. Thank you for each boy and girl who knows you as Savior, knows that you love them, and knows that they can love you back by obeying your word, by being good with uh, obeying parents and living in peace with their brothers and sisters and showing love to their neighbors. And we thank you for these kids and for all the love you give to us. In Jesus' name, amen.